We are into Q4, and one of the biggest days is Black Friday. And what I wanted to do here is I wanted to share with you three ways that you can crush Black Friday. And if you want, you can even crush Cyber Monday because now that's become similar to Black Friday. But there are some things that we want to be doing and we want to get as much attention as we can. And we want to take advantage of this day or these two days as much as possible. So what can we do? What can we do? Let's start with the very first one. I think you need to run a discount if you're not running a discount. And if you are running a discount, it's got to be a bigger discount. I want you to also not just think about the profit side of things, because that's what a lot of people are doing, right? They're like, oh my gosh, I want to make all this profit. Yes, we want to make profit, but there's going to be some, just like Walmart has done, uh, Amazon has done, any of the big stores have done. I mean, heck, Lowe's does it, Home Depot, all of them do it, right? There's going to be a special deal on one item or maybe one item in a certain category. So you can use this as your Black Friday sale, right? On all of our sweatshirts, we're going to do 50% off or 30% off, something like that. But it's only going to be for Black Friday. It's only going to be for Cyber Monday. And little secret here, you can actually use this on non-Black Friday or Cyber, Cyber Monday days, by the way. It works throughout the entire year, all right? But it's something that a lot of people are not thinking of. They're just like, oh, it's Black Friday. There's going to be a whole bunch of traffic. So I'll just sit and wait for the traffic and I'm going to keep my prices at 10% off or I'm going to keep my prices with no percentage off. You got to understand that, yes, there's traffic, but the traffic is also looking for a deal. So it doesn't mean you have to do your whole store. It doesn't, doesn't mean your whole shop has to be, you know, discounted this heavy, but you have to think to yourself, what are some items that are going to have a higher demand? And I, I've always talked about this, right? You want to use those in-demand products to lead people into your shop. You know, as well as I do, if you go into a Walmart on Black Friday, you're going to get the deal, but you're also going to walk out with some other ones that aren't such a great deal. They're deals maybe, but they're not the big draw, right? We want something that's going to be a draw. So I want you to start right now thinking what are going to be those products? What are going to be the products that are going to be the ones that are going to drive the attention and drive the traffic to your shop? Then it's your job to, when people come into your shop, to then convert them on your other, your other items. And they just rolled out their bundle feature now. So if you have products that are aligned with each other, you can turn that on. And now you can have like two other products that could be bought with this one as a bundle. So that's another great way of doing this. But the one thing I'm going to throw a little, a little thing in here for you. The one thing you want to do though, also is you want to make sure that those listings that are going to be the ones that are going to get the draw that they are going to convert. Meaning they are going to convert a viewer into a buyer. And how do you do this? There's a bunch of different ways. And actually, we just created a playbook for ourselves at first, but then we decided to hire a designer and make it more user-friendly. It's what we're calling our conversion maximizer playbook. We actually are offering it now for just 10 bucks. It's uh, 25 top converting listings. Uh, I say top, they're over 3%. And what we did is we analyzed those. It's about 85 pages long. And it also allows you to kind of do a check against yours. This is something I think is super important because if we're getting traffic, we want to convert to sales and uh, this will definitely help you do that. If you want a copy of that, just put conversions in the comments, just put conversions in the comments and we'll, we'll get you a link to that. All right. So with that all being said, that's the very first thing. Okay. And that is a conversion piece. Because if people come in there on Black Friday, everyone has been trained that Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals, right? Doesn't mean everything's got to be a deal. It just means that you got to have a few items that are a deal. And I would say the ones that are getting demand. All right. All right. Moving on to number two, what else can you do to crush Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales? You want traffic, right? Well, run some Etsy ads. I know, I know it's scary. People are like, oh, but I don't want to, it's going to be more expensive or, oh, I don't want to spend a lot of money because there's already going to be traffic there and it's going to eat into my profits. Remember what I said, we want to get attention to those products to drive people in our shop. The one thing I did not mention is, and a lot of people don't 
they, they don't understand this and it's not their fault. They just haven't been brought up in the marketing space or the business space. They're Etsy shops that are trying to make some extra money, maybe trying to make a full-time living, but they just don't understand the business side of things yet. Uh, and that is building that email list of customers. So if you get someone that comes in and buys your product and you didn't make as much profit, but yet you're able to have them buy more because now you let them into your shop. You might've turned on the bundle feature. So now all of a sudden you see two other items that's going to increase the cart value. All right. We're also able to build our email list. And when we build the email list, that's going to allow us to, well, sell more to that customer, have a repeat customer when we have more products for them to buy. All right. And we're big on email marketing. It's been working for us for over 20 years. It still works today. Some people say email is dead. It's not. Uh, we're using it every single day in a variety of businesses. Okay. Across a variety of niches. Okay. So that's what I would say there. Don't be afraid to spend some money on Etsy ads. Although you want to be strategic and you want to have that discount running on that product for Black Friday because that's what people are going to be looking for and that's what's going to get them to convert to a sale. And then we convert them into an email subscriber, which then we can do further marketing down the line. And that's really super important. Number three, just what I just mentioned, email. If you have an email list, I don't care if it's 50 people. If you have an email list, you want to let people know about your Black Friday sale. And you even want to let them know a week before Black Friday. Let them know, hey, we're working on uh, you know, our, our special deal or we're working on a, a new product even. You could even launch a new product around Black Friday and be the product release if you want to because there's so much attention for this. Or maybe you're going to do personalization for free for that day, right? You can do that as well. But email is going to drive awareness and drive attention. All right. Now I know email can be scary for a lot of people. We actually have a playbook. It's another playbook. This one's free. We're giving this one away for free. Uh, and if you want a copy of that, just put email in the comments and we'll send you a copy of that. All right. And that'll walk you through our email marketing strategy. Also, it'll show you how we build a list, not on Etsy, off of Etsy, uh, using what we call our fishbowl method, which is really a giveaway. Um, it'll make more sense if you download the guide. And uh, it'll walk you through exactly what we're talking about there. But even if you don't have the email list this year, build it for after the first of the year. Okay. And we're taking advantage of the, uh, the amount of traffic that's coming in and converting them to a sale. If we convert them to a sale, we have a chance of getting them on our email list. And before you say, well, Scott, I thought it's against the terms of service. You can't build an email list. They don't want you to send an email. That's wrong. That is false. What you can do or what you can't do is just randomly email. You just can't do that. Okay. You get a customer, you get their email. You can't just randomly email them. What, what you can do is ask them if they want to join your special VIP club where they'll get special discounts, special releases, and maybe even you'll do some giveaways. Right. And what you do there is in that first message that goes out to your customer, once they purchased in Etsy, you would then let them know about your VIP club. We basically use the, uh, they call it a landing page. It's basically just a one page little mini, uh, web page. That's like a website and it offers a discount and getting access to the VIP club and in exchange for their email address. So now they have to click on that link. They have to go to a page. They have to put their name and email address in, and they have to say, yes, I want to receive this. And I want to receive email from you. Once you get that, you can email them. And if they don't want to receive your email, guess what? There's a little, a little thing at the bottom there that says unsubscribe and every email will have that in there. Uh, we use Everbee email. If you're not using that yet, I definitely recommend you uh, trying them. Uh, you can head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash Everbee and you can go ahead and sign up over there. All right. That's what we use. Um, so that's the three things. So number one, plan your discounts now and get ready to ramp things up. Number two, Run ads on those top products that you're going to be promoting, all right? And then number three, send emails, all right? And the one thing I didn't mention there on the email side of things is don't just send one email, okay? You send one in the morning, one late afternoon, and then one three hours before the, it's going to expire, okay? You're giving people a heads up. You're reminding them that it's going to come to an end, and then you're reminding them one last time, last chance. And that right there 
uh, has done very well for us in a variety of different businesses and has generated millions of dollars in sales across, like I said, multiple niches. All right. So that's what I would do. Those are the three things that I would do. So this way here, you can crush Black Friday and Cyber Monday.